So you got yourself a deer, did you? Congratulations. Today I'm gonna to show you the entire process of how I take this beautiful animal and put venison away in my freezer, all myself, of course. Now, do I have to tell you viewer discretion advised for real life things like this? I don't know, you clicked on the video. In my opinion, let your kids watch this. So my buddy Canadian Prepper and I each got ourselves a white-tail deer. It was a successful hunt. Now I have to put some high-quality venison in my freezer. First, go out, get yourself a deer with the proper licenses and everything. In the field, you will field dress it. So that is taking out the guts of it and tagging it. Taking uh, your knife, and this is my main knife that I use. It's got a blade like this. This is what I carry hunting. This is for gutting. First, you cut in deep around the business end, the back end plumbing, and then you gut the animal right up the, the middle to the ribs. You will reach in, cut away some of the membranes holding in all the internal organs. Pull it down, kind of use gravity to help you. Pull the back plumbing out so you don't contaminate any of the meat. And it's very, very simple to field dress an animal. Out of the animal, we save the heart, of course, and the liver. After that animal is field dressed, put your proper tags on. There is a head seal, a hide seal, and a meat seal. The meat seal goes on the rear hawk. The hide seal goes on the hide, somewhere uh, convenient around the midsection. And the head seal can either go on the horn, if it's a male deer, or in this case, a doe through the ear. Next is you're going to want to skin the animal. The easiest way that I found is you get yourself a hawk spreader like this and hoist it up with something. I use a machine, you can use whatever you want. Skin it from the back end all the way down to the front. So you're essentially cutting around the legs and slowly just using gravity to help you. It's hung from the hind hawks all the way down. And when you get past the front legs, which are the hardest part to do, take it down to as far as you can get to the head and uh, remove the head. With a clean job, this is what you're left with. If you don't want to field dress in the field and you're close to home or have some daylight time or something, you can also uh, hang the deer to field dress it. And I find it gives you a little bit better job than uh, doing it on the ground, having somebody hold a leg to make your proper cuts. You can see the back business end, which is the hardest part for your first cuts and kind of do it backwards. You use gravity to the organs to the front. In that method, you'll want to split it, split apart the rib cage. On a small deer like this, uh, you can just use a knife or you can use a hatchet, a bone hatchet. Now, you don't want to use any water cleaning uh, carcass at all. So unless you shot some of the guts or need to wash the inside, you can use a little bit of water to get any, any of that contamination out. Otherwise, don't use any water. As you get better at skinning, you're going to get less hair on the carcass. This is what I use for a skinning knife. I'm still not the best, so I have little bits of hair on this. I don't use water. What I use is a little propane torch. And what this is going to do is it's going to burn off any hair on the meat. You're not cooking the meat. You are burning off any hair instead of trying to wash it off. When you butcher something like a pig or a goat, you can actually use a big, bigger torch and burn all of the hair off and then pressure wash it. This leaves the skin on. In this case with the deer, I skin it so the skin comes off and I'm just getting any last bits of hair that are on the meat with this little torch. After the carcass is skinned, you can remove all of the hooves off of the animal that will still have some hair on them. So you can use a little saw or a little hatchet and it's just one bone like that. And then use your standard hunting knife and cut through the sinews and stuff and your hoof. So this is also for fully utilized by us. This is dog chew toys or chew treats. They will spend hours like this. Your dogs will very much appreciate it. 
Now, if you did also want to utilize the deer hide, you can have that tanned. If you want to make a nice deer rug with the fur still on, you can skin it properly in the right cuts behind the leg to make it lay out like a nice rug, or you can send that away so somebody can utilize the deer leather. Maybe they'll make gloves or something out of it. You can also utilize the head and the horns. Horns make a excellent dog chew toy. It'll keep them busy for a long time. If you want a trophy for your successful hunt, you could have that head and or horns bleached and have that as a display of your successful hunt. Myself, I am a meat hunter. I love venison. It's one of the world's most desired meat actually, and I just love it. And I'm gonna show you what I do to fully utilize this animal. So this is my hunting knife I carry for field dressing, tagging, and skinning. Then I switch to a deboning knife. This is what butchers use for the next part of what we're gonna do. When the animal is up on the hawk spreader, I will instantly take out the tenderloin. The tenderloin is located the hindquarters on the inside of the animal right here. And lots of times after a successful hunt, I will throw that right in the frying pan and enjoy the tenderloins. After that, when you're ready, you can do it while it's still hanging. But the next piece is called the back straps. That's a lean loin that goes on each side of the spine. And that's what I take out. With the back strap, what I do with that is cut it in stakes, however thick that you want. They're small little stakes, especially on a small white tail like this. Or you can cut it into uh, fine strips and make very lean muscle jerky with that. We're going to cut along the spine and follow that meat down. And it's actually quite simple to see. Just kind of pull it away as you slowly work your knife through and peel it back following the spine and then the back of the rib cage down. So that's the back strap. Get yourself some dollar store meat tubs if you want or real meat tubs to keep everything separated. After you have those beautiful back straps out, the next thing to do is quarter the animal. So you can quarter it if it's, you're doing it yourself and it's a larger uh, deer, you can do it while it's hanging up. So that's removing both front legs and shoulders and both hind quarters. So we're splitting it up into essentially the four leg systems and then the middle ribs and neck. The front shoulders come off extremely easy. There's barely anything to them. It's just a few pieces of connecting tissue and follow the shoulder blade up and remove the front, front shoulder. Not a lot of meat on a small deer like this on the front shoulder. This front shoulder will be deboned and all going to grind. Then the hind quarters is where your roasts are and the big chunks of meat. So simply cut, cut them off and you could use a saw or your bone hatchet and break, break the spine to separate. And then I have my two hind quarters here. Then you can split the hindquarters apart with a saw or a, a bolt and hatchet. And there's one hindquarter, two hindquarters. So at this point, what we have for meat is the heart, if you're saving, the liver, if you're going to hopefully utilize that. The beautiful back straps, two of these. The tenderloins that we took out initially. One hind quarter, two hind quarters, two front quarters, and the middle section. So there's some neck meat, rib meat, and this guy. 
Now the hind quarter is where you can get some roast meat or essentially just nice big chunks of meat out of. So we're just going to try to find, find those. So this is also known as deboning. We're deboning the whole animal now. This is the time consuming part. So nice big chunks of meat like that. On a small deer like this, the roasts are quite small. But this is uh, kind of another re very lean part where you're gonna get the majority of your meat off of the animal. So get your uh, roasts or essentially your large masses of leaner meat off of the hind quarter, as many roasts as you want or whatever. And then the rest is slowly picking away and getting all of that good meat off of the bone, essentially. Deboning. You could uh, use some of the small lean pieces of meat that you do, cut them thin and make muscle jerky. The majority of what I do with the deer is take the small pieces of meat and put it into ground. From ground, I can make uh, ground jerky, sausage, any way that you'd use ground meat, essentially. So these are our soup bones, or if you're feeling generous to your dogs, this will keep them busy and they love it. So off of just one hind quarter, we got a whole tub. So roasts and lean meat. So most of that's ready for uh, grinding. Out of that one hind quarter, all we have is this for waste. And then I put the soup bones in a separate thing and I will freeze these separate. So the other hind quarter, a little bit closer up. So all of this is really lean meat in here, roast meat. Off of a deer, we don't really save the fat. There's not enough fat, but you can trim away some of this hard fat and just discard it, I guess. There's not much. You can kind of just feel around, like here's the, the hip and the back. You can just follow that and get kind of the biggest chunks of meat that you can off of it, take your time. Just try to follow the bone. So that's a pure chunk of meat, depending on what size of roast you want. Like, I think I'll keep this one into a roast. So just follow a membrane. That's good enough. Good size roast, my wife can make corn deer or something out of it can just uh, take away a little bit of any membranes if you want, or leave, cook it with it on. So there's a nice chunk of meat for a roast. Here's another beautiful chunk of meat. Just cl clean it up a tiny little bit. The only thing I'm throwing away is little bits like this. Little tendon or piece of bone even. That's the only thing discarded, the rest goes to ground. And what I'll do is I'll cut it in just convenient sizes because most of this I'm doing in ground. You could just cut this in thin strips like this and make a muscle jerky out of parts of the roast. Beautiful, that would make some beautiful muscle jerky but the majority of this I'm just putting into ground because that's where how we utilize this. Cut it in good, good sized pieces that it, it will go in the meat grinder easy for you. So off of two hind quarters, this is what I got. A whole tub of really lean meat. In there are some roasts I'm gonna save. My wife will just make slow cooked roasts or corn deer, something like that. So nice roast meat, but the majority is just lean meat that I could make muscle jerky with. Or uh, like I said, the majority of this I'm just gonna do into ground. All that's discarded is this and a little tub of soup bones. 
The front quarters, there is not much meat on these. These are just gonna get deboned. So essentially just use your knife, take your time, cut meat off. Um, this is all going to grind, or you could do again, muscle jerky with it. Just follow the bone, cut it in the meat in sizes that fit in your meat grinder nicely. So that might be too big for the meat grinder. So I'll cut it like this so it'll fit in the machine better. Again, all of this is good to grind up. You could take off a little bit of this kind of hard fat and any sinews, but this is all good. You grind this up, this is food. Try to follow the front shoulder blade and the bone. Bigger chunks, it just makes it easier. So that's a deboned front front uh, quarter. So not much meat on those. And I, I just will separate it for uh, soup bones for my wife. I'll do this other one. Okay, now the torso, not much meat on here. I do not save the uh, the ribs like you would, you know, a rack, cook a rack of ribs. I just debone the whole thing. There's uh, some meat you can grind around the neck area, some a decent amount of meat. And the rest is just kind of this cap over the ribs and then the ribs themselves. So it's just simply deboning all for grind and just clean it up like right right here there's some sinew or just a membrane with nothing on it so i will just discard this there's nothing on there stuff like this excellent for ground lots of meat around the neck area that's not maybe the most tender spot this is excellent for ground This would be where some of your bacons would be on a pig for a deer, just ground. Any hard tissues like this, that's discarded. What's left of the rib bone sure makes a nice uh, dog treat, jog, doggy chew treat, or soup. The spine, I discard. Uh, there's, I don't know much about chronic wasting disease, but it, if there's anything, it's, I guess it's in the spine. So do not eat the spine, do not feed this to your dogs. Now I'm just gonna package everything up. Soup Bones Deer 2023. Cat food trimmings, all the discard, I'm not even gonna grind. The good old back straps, I'm just gonna clean them up, the sinew a little bit off of them, the membrane. It's kind of like filleting a fish. These I'm going to cut into steaks, little deer steaks like that, off of this small dough. Same with the other back strap. These are my little steaks. Clean up the liver a little bit. I'm gonna cut the liver into freeze drying sizes, nice thin pieces. Freeze that to freeze dry later. The heart I'm just gonna put in with the grind. 
Now I'm gonna butcher paper the steaks, roasts, and liver. Enough for uh, a meal for your family, whatever you usually cook. You could vacuum seal them if you want, but I find just this uh, simple butcher paper so they lay flat in my freezer, don't take up much space, and this isn't going to last very long anyway. I'm going to save my wife a few nice roasts. And lastly is getting out the meat grinder and grinding up the majority of the deer. That's how we use it. So I could make again muscle jerky with this, but I'm going to grind it up. I can make uh, pureed jerky with it, but we can do deer burgers, spaghetti, tacos. We use a lot of ground in our house. You can use uh, an electric meat grinder or a manual one, whatever, but I use this one. I put the thick attachment on first and I'm going to actually run this through two times, put the finer one on and as I load it into the ground bags. So I cut it into manageable sizes that fit very simply in the grinder. Oh, except for this, I lied. A little plunger, push it down. One big tote down. Yummy. All that rib meat, that is not discard. That is the good stuff for grind. Even something like this, most people discard. This would be some of the deer belly, lots of fat on it. Goes through this grinder like nothing. What kind of prepper are you if you don't have ground meat bags stored? And a ground meat bag uh, tire. And it's that easy. So I hope you enjoyed and that was educational. Got a bag of trimmings for cat food, bag of soup bones, saved three good sized roasts, four big family meals of steak, um, and nine things of large uh, two pound bags of ground off of that small white tail dough. So that took me about two hours and I've done it before and have quite a bit of equipment. So from proper knives, bags, butcher paper, butcher paper roller, ground beef bags, this uh, little guy for sealing up the ground bags is great. Meat grinder, all the attachments, plastic bags, tape, uh, meat bins, all that stuff. And it's pretty, pretty easy. And most importantly, a really clean work surface like this stainless counter I put in my shop kitchen. So this is how I fully utilize deer. It all just, everything takes time. It's not hard. Don't be overwhelmed with it. This is your main, main bits that you need to know when butchering kind of any animal. If you want to get into getting the tomahawk steaks and uh, T-bone steaks and, you know, bacon slabs off of uh, pork is, is very easy. 
but you need a bandsaw and you really need to know your stuff for this. This is basic home butchering or farm butchering or wild game processing and the basics of what you need to know. If you need, if you know all this, then you can do it yourself. Also, thank you very much to the deer. That deer is going to feed my family for three weeks of really good hearty meals for my large family. And uh, make sure my boys grow really big and strong and I keep up all my energy as best I can. So thank you, deer. We'll catch you next time. Alrighty, we did it, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now the work begins. Now the work well, I mean, begins. That's a, that's a lot of for, you know. Yeah, we're good. Work. We're good, man. We, we will survive. <laughs>